Welcome back to our channel where we share insights from the Bible. Let's delve into the intriguing story of Lot's daughters from Genesis 19:31 to 37. And what the Bible says about the firstborn daughters, we witness a desperate situation that leads to an unconventional decision. In the aftermath of the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah, Lot and his two daughters find themselves in a precarious situation. They have lost their home, their community, and their mother. Now, residing in a cave, they grapple with the challenge of continuing their family line. The older daughter recognizes that there are no eligible men around to marry. Without male heirs, their family line faces extinction. Desperate to preserve their lineage, the older daughter devises an audacious plan, they will get their father, Lot, drunk and sleep with him to conceive children. She persuades Lot to drink wine, and that night, she sleeps with him. Lot remains unaware of the encounter. Although not specific to firstborn daughters, this verse emphasizes that children are a gift and reward from God to parents. Daughters, like all children, are considered blessings. The next night, the younger daughter follows suit. Again, Lot is oblivious to their actions. Both daughters become pregnant by their father. The older daughter gives birth to a son named Moab. The name Moab sounds like the Hebrew phrase for from father, emphasizing the unconventional origin of his lineage. The story raises ethical dilemmas. Was their desperate act justified? Did the ends, preserving the family line, justify the means, sleeping with their father? We must consider the cultural norms and customs of that time. Desperate circumstances often lead to unconventional decisions. Lot's daughters are complex characters, desperate, resourceful, and driven by survival instincts. Let's explore the lesser known story of Saul's daughters from 1 Samuel 14 49. In this passage, we encounter Mirab and Mihal, two remarkable women who navigated the complexities of their royal lineage. King Saul, the first anointed ruler of Israel, had sons who would inherit his legacy. But it is his daughters, Mirab and Mihal, who captivate our attention. Their lives unfold against a backdrop of political intrigue, family dynamics, and personal choices. As the firstborn, Mirab carried the weight of tradition. She was destined for a strategic marriage, one that would strengthen alliances and secure her father's throne. Mirab's life became a bargaining chip. Her hand was promised to David, the young shepherd who would later become a legendary king. Yet, circumstances shifted, and Mirab's fate remained uncertain. Mihal possessed a fiery spirit. She defied conventions, daring to love beyond political calculations. Her heart belonged to David, the same shepherd who played the harp for he Mihal's love for David led her to protect him from her father's wrath. She helped him escape Saul's murderous intentions, risking her own safety. Mihal paid dearly for her loyalty. Saul, in a fit of rage, took her away from David and married her off to another man. Her heart remained torn between duty and desire. Mirab and Mihal's relationship was complex. They shared a father but had divergent paths. Mirab's destiny lay in political alliances, while Mihal's heart yearned for love. Like, comment and subscribe for more video like this. As David's star ascended, both sisters were affected. Mirab's betrothal to him was revoked, and Mihal's love for him endured, even in separation. Mirab and Mihal are often overshadowed by their male counterparts. Yet, their resilience and choices shape the course of history. Their stories echo the eternal struggle between love and duty. Mirab's sacrifice for political stability contrasts with Mihal's defiance for love's sake. We wonder what became of Mirab and Mihal after the biblical accounts. Did they find happiness? Did they reconcile their hearts with their roles? The profound meaning behind Psalm 127 3-5. Although not exclusive to firstborn daughters, these verses celebrate the precious gift of children and their significance in family life. Psalm 127 is a timeless song of ascent, sung by Jews on their pilgrimages to Jerusalem. It imparts wisdom relevant to practical living, including the role of children in God's design. Whether sons or daughters, children are a heritage, a legacy, bestowed by the Lord. Children are a heritage from the Lord, offspring a reward. These words echo across generations, emphasizing that children are not mere biological outcomes but divine gifts. They carry the imprint of God's grace and purpose. Like arrows in the hands of a warrior are children born in one's youth. Imagine a skilled archer, each arrow carefully crafted, aimed, and released. Children, too, are like arrows entrusted to parents. They possess potential, direction, and impact. Spurgeon aptly called this the builder's song. 
Just as builders construct physical structures, sons, or children, build up families. Both endeavors thrive under divine favor. Rising early or toiling late for material gain is insufficient if God is forgotten. The Latin motto Nisi Dominus Frustra, from this song, reminds us, except the Lord, in vain. The intriguing lineage of Canaan, the firstborn son of Ham, as described in Genesis 10:15. While this passage doesn't specifically focus on daughters, it sheds light on the importance of firstborns within genealogies. The early chapters of Genesis provide a rich tapestry of human history, tracing the origins of nations and people. While this passage doesn't specifically focus on daughters, it sheds light on the importance of firstborns within genealogies. The early chapters of Genesis provide a rich tapestry of human history, tracing the origins of nations and peoples. Among these narratives, Canaan emerges as a pivotal figure, a firstborn whose descendants would shape the course of ancient civilizations. The name Canaan remains somewhat mysterious. Scholars debate its origin, but it likely stems from a Hamitic word. Whether it denotes lowland or has other connotations, Canaan's legacy transcends linguistic nuances. Shape the course of ancient civilizations. Canaan's lineage is rooted in the Hamitic branch of humanity. Despite the Canaanites adopting a Semitic language later, their original home lay along the Indian Ocean. Driven by pressure from Semitic races, they migrated, absorbing linguistic influences. Unlike other names in this genealogy, Sidon refers to a specific city, the ancient coastal city of Sidon. Situated about 30 miles north of Tyre, Sidon became a settled community due to its advantages in fishing and commerce. It was a hub of culture and trade, even contributing the Phoenician alphabet to the Greeks. The Hittites, descendants of Canaan, left. An indelible mark on history. Their language and monuments have fascinated scholars. They occupied not only Syria but also a significant portion of Asia Minor. Their influence extended far beyond their immediate region. This tribe held the territory later occupied by Benjamin and retained Jerusalem until David's time. These mountaineers inhabited Judea's hill country, ruling over five kings. Their presence adds to the mosaic of Canaanite diver. The Archites, Sinites, Arvadites, Zemurites, and Hamathites, all part of Canaan's legacy. Canaan's position as the firstborn underscores the weight of responsibility. His descendants shaped cultures, languages, and cities. The Canaanites absorbed and contributed to this chapter extols the virtues of a godly woman, emphasizing her strength, wisdom, and reverence for the Lord. While it doesn't specifically focus on firstborn daughters, it underscores the value of all virtuous women in society various civilizations. Their journey reflects the ebb and flow of human history. Proverbs 31 28-29, this chapter praises a virtuous woman, emphasizing her strength, wisdom, and fear of the Lord. While not exclusive to firstborn daughters, it highlights the value of godly women in society. In the context of Proverbs 31, we find a poetic description of an ideal wife, a woman who embodies wisdom, diligence, and compassion. We find a poetic description of an ideal wife, a woman who embodies wisdom, diligence, and compassion. Her children rise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Here, we see the honor bestowed upon this woman by her family. Her children recognize her worth and bless her, while her husband praises her. Their admiration reflects her character and the impact she has on their lives. Many daughters have done well, but you excel them all. This verse acknowledges that there are many virtuous women, but the woman described in Proverbs 31 surpasses them all. Her excellence lies not only in her deeds but also in her heart, a heart devoted to God and others. Now, let's expand upon this narrative. Imagine a bustling household where this remarkable woman resides. Her days are filled with purposeful work, kindness, and wisdom. She rises early, ensuring her family's needs are met. She manages her household efficiently, never idle or wasteful. Her hands are skilled, spinning wool, weaving fabric, and providing for her loved ones. As the firstborn daughter, she carries the legacy of faith and virtue passed down through generations. Her parents instilled in her a reverence for God, teaching her to seek wisdom and live righteously. She embodies the principles of Proverbs 31, impacting not only her immediate family but also her community. In the marketplace, her reputation precedes her. People admire her integrity, kindness, and generosity. She extends her hand to the poor, ensuring their needs are met. Her recognizing his sovereignty and seeking his guidance. Her trust in God shapes her character, 
making her a beacon of hope and encouragement to others. Wisdom guides her decisions, and her strength sustains her through challenges. The woman's faith is her cornerstone. She fears the Lord. As the sun sets, her family gathers around the hearth. Her children, whether firstborn or not, rise up and call her blessed. They recount her tireless efforts, her love, and her unwavering commitment. Her husband joins in, praising her as a rare gem among women. And so, the legacy continues. The firstborn daughter learns from her mother's example, carrying forward the torch of virtue. Excellence lies not in titles or birth order but in a heart surrendered to God, 